came across a very interesting article today in Breitbart. And it's about this school district in Washington State that has decided to reclassify Asian students basically as white, throwing them in the category of white students. And I'll link to it in the description below. This article's interesting on several levels. You may remember that last week, if you subscribe to the channel, I posted a video on white privilege. And one of the elements of white privilege I talked about was this fact that the narrative is destroyed by the success in terms of, of wealth and education of Asian students and Asian people, East and South Asians, who are actually doing better than whites in this country. And it sort of throws off the whole narrative of white privilege. We have a white privilege narrative, you know, you have whites at the top, then you have people who are brown, black, and red, Native Americans. Where the reality is that above the whites are East Asians and at the top, South Asians. I think South Asians have the highest uh, household income of any ethnic group in this country. Now that throws off the narrative of white privilege because if this country is, you know, riddled with uh, institutional racism, structural racism, systemic racism, and invisible racism, and white privilege, how do you explain all these Asians who are doing so well? And the answer, of course, is you can't because it destroys the narrative of white privilege. It destroys all the narratives that they're pushing with regard to race in this country, about how racist it is. I mean, the other obvious example is if this country is so riddled with racism, why do people of color keep coming? It's not just Asians who come here. You have people from Latin and South America who come here. You have people from Africa come here. I think between 1990 and 2000, more Africans emigrated legally to the United States that had been brought here as slaves during the period of slavery. Are, are, they, are all these people stupid? I mean, is this guy sitting around in Nigeria and he's saying, Oh, you know, the country's so racist, there's institutional racism, structural racism, systemic racism, invisible racism. It's got a horrible history of race and lynching and the police are hunting black men on the streets. So guess what, honey? We're moving to the United States. Are, are all these people stupid? Is that what you're saying? That immigrants of color who come to, this, to, come to the United States legally and illegally are all fools? You can't have it both ways. I mean, they're coming here for a reason. And why are they coming? They're coming here, for example, Nigerians who come here are doing better than homegrown domestic African-Americans. Haitians who have only started coming here are doing better than homegrown African-Americans. So there are all these things, problems with this narrative of racism that's being pushed in this country by the left that are undercut particularly and most significantly by Asians, East Asians and South Asian. Now what's happened in this school district is they had the students, you had white students, and then you had students of color. And they had a problem because the Asian students were doing better than the other students of color. In fact, they're, they're doing better than the white students, which is an unusual, you, you see it all over the place across the country. So what, what are they to do? They've got this narrative problem because the Asians, they're people of color, but they're not being held back. What's wrong? So what they did was they basically, I think they're reversing it now because they're under so much pressure and, and attack from the, in the media. They basically lumped the Asians in with the white students. And they're looking for, now they're de defining this not by color, but by measures of success. In other words, if, if you're a person of color and you're successful, then you get lumped in with the whites. So, so is it really a question now of, of race? Is it, a, is it a question of color or is it a quick uh, question of success? Is the determination of people of color unsuccessful people? If you're a successful person, person of color, you become white or you, you're thrown in with the whites. So that's the problem you have with this white privilege narrative, the general narrative about race in this country. Asians are destroying. So what do you do? You just have to reclassify them, I guess, as white. 
And you have to start equating. You have to define things, not by color now, but by success. White equals success. Non-white equals failure. That's what the left is saying. Remember when, I forget exactly what he said, Joe Biden said something about, you know, uh, poor kids. Yeah, I think that's what he said. He said, poor kids can do just as well in school as white kids. <laughs> this is the thinking of the progressive left. That wasn't a gap. This is really true. If you take Biden's statement, that's exactly what they're doing, or at least what they were doing in the school district in Washington state. They're equating success with being white. They're equating failure with being a minority. Now, I know, you know, statistically, you look at the aggregate, yeah, they're not doing as well in school as others, but I mean, there's plenty of successful African Americans in this country. I mean, there are plenty. We, everybody's you know, talking about how great it is that Kamala Harris is vice president. She portrays herself as an African American. Fine, you know, I'm not going to question her identity. But isn't she a success? You know, wasn't Barack Obama a success? Or is there something else going on here that uh, both of these people who reached high office could not could be defined by some people as not actually being African American? You know, Obama's father was from East Africa. Kamala Harris's father is from Jamaica. So there are all these issues, and you can see the problem they're having with this narrative. It's being messed up by these damned Asians. They foul everything up. They mess up the diagrams. They mess up everything. So you basically have to reclassify them, and as often as you can, ignore them. Because that's the reality. The reality is, as I said in my video last week, you know, white privilege is a, a fallacious argument, a racist fallacious argument. And we're seeing it applied in this one little spot out there in Washington. I mean, what are we going to have, you know, Joe Biden as president saying, you know, if you do well on your SATs, you ain't black? Because that's what they're saying to the Asians. If you do well on your SATs and your other scores and tests that you take, you ain't a student of color. We're going to throw you up here with the white students. You know, they're, they're, they're equating basically failure with color. And if you don't fail, then you're not colored. You become white. And that's, that's racism. Obviously, the common denominator in this country is not being a person of color. I mean, the Japanese and Chinese historically have been, had rough times in this country. We know what happened to the Japanese during World War II, forced to sell everything they had on the West Coast, and sent to camps for the duration. You know, Chinese, maybe, most people probably don't know as much about Chinese Americans other than you know, they built the railroads, but they did a lot of other things. Mining, you name it. They were doing it out on the West Coast. They were lynched. There are instances of, uh, of uh, uh, camping settlements, mining settlements, just being wiped out. You know, three dozen people being killed. There's another story, not quite sure if it's true. Uh, the Chinese, the mine ran out and they didn't want to pay their Chinese workers. So they enticed them into the mine and then they sealed it up and killed 300 of them. There's a dispute about whether or not that's true, but that's the kind of thing that went on out there. And, and these atrocities were committed by whites in general, by the Knights of Labor, you know, one of the predecessors of the American Federation of Labor or the AFL-CIO. The, the Union, yep, they were wiping out the Chinese, and Native Americans, sometimes on their own, sometimes with white help and sponsorship and being egged on, they would attack these uh, Chinese settlements and wipe them out, massacre people. And this went on for decades. There, there were riots to get Chinese out of uh, Seattle, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, two lefty havens today. They have a really bad record on dealing with the Chinese. Uh, Tacoma, there was another big city that, that the Chinese were basically driven out of the city. And another place, they, they put them on boats and sent them out to sea. Nobody knows what happened to them. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that went on with the Chinese. And yet today, 
Where are they? Despite discrimination, despite you know the uh, uh, exclusion acts that were passed in the early 19th century, despite being lynched, despite all these other things, you know they're up there near the top of uh, household income and educational achievement. People from India, very top. Are they not people of color? I mean, people from South India are really dark. They're darker than some African Americans. How can they not be people of color? But damn it, they just did too well on those, those uh, essay exams and stuff. So they have to be reclassified. It's a damn shame that's what this country has come to this. You know, we're tying ourselves in knots over race to try to fit a narrative constructed by the left that wants to portray this, con this country as just horribly racist from inception to the present. Nothing's improved. Nothing's ever gotten better. It's all white, white, white. That's what dominates the country. That's what runs the country. And then along come these Asians and they're just destroying the narrative. I don't know where that's going to end up, but they just look foolish tying themselves in knots, trying to work their way around the reality that they don't want to face. That's my take. Let me know what you think in the comment. Give a thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button so you'll know when I post new videos. Uh, share the video with your friends. And until the next time, keep fighting.